Most people don't know that Africa is falling apart. And this despite the fact that the ground there cracked open almost two decades ago and even split a man's house in the process. Since then, it has been clear that the continent is undergoing a drastic change. But why is Africa splitting in two in the first place? What elemental forces are at work here? What consequences does this process have for the African population and the rest of the world? In March 2018, people in Kenya could not believe their eyes. Near the Suspo volcano, the maw of the earth had suddenly opened up. The 15-meter deep, 20-meter wide, and several kilometer long path that had opened up in the ground forced many residents to leave their homes, and the Mai Mahiu Narok Road, a vital traffic artery, was also severely affected at the time. But today, more than five years later, the region has long since returned to normality. But appearances are deceptive. While the population goes about its daily business, researchers are certain that Africa is currently breaking apart. In fact, the rift in Kenya is just one of many that are now gaping in several East African states. Scientists have known since 2005 that the Earth is pursuing its own plans. However, the more than 50 kilometer long fissure that was discovered in the Ethiopian desert back then was just the beginning of a development that will end in the formation of a new landmass and a new sea. In detail, this process concerns the Great African Rift Valley and thus a gigantic tectonic stretching zone that extends from East Africa to Southwest Asia. Part of this is the East African Rift Valley, which stretches from Syria to the Gulf of Aden and has a total length of over 6,000 kilometers. While the African plate is breaking up on its eastern side, a new tectonic plate is forming, the so-called Somalia Plate. According to NASA's Earth Observatory, the Somalia Plate is moving eastwards from the larger, older African Plate. At the same time, the Somalia and African plates are also separating from the Arabian plate in the north. As the plates intersect in the Ethiopian region of Afar, they form a Y-shaped rift system that will permanently change the face of the world. Why is Africa breaking apart? In view of current developments, experts assume that the Red Sea will one day completely submerge the Afar depression in the north. The new ocean thus created between the African and Somali plates will eventually add a new landmass to the world maps of the future. But when will Africa experience the final rupture? And how do the colossal cracks form in the first place? Well, in short, we are dealing with the influence of magma. In the deeper layers of the Earth's mantle, the so-called asthenosphere, scientists have identified a huge magma flow. This superplume lurks beneath the Great African Rift Valley and moves from South Africa to the Arabian Peninsula. Most geologists believe that magma is constantly being released from the superplume and pushed towards the Earth's surface. And the consequences of this process are visible to us all. When the Earth's crust bulges, volcanic activity and severe tremors occur along the Great Rift Valley. The bulging stretches the Earth's crust until it is finally so strained that it fractures leaving deep, kilometer-long gashes in the ground. And although this awe-inspiring spectacle is only now in the public eye, it is certain that the roots of the fractures go back 30 million years. This becomes clear when you take a closer look at the nature of the Afar region. This is where the stretching of the lithosphere is most advanced, and the thinned Earth's crust is home to major volcanic activity. As soon as the final rupture occurs, the new ocean will take hold here first, but when will this actually happen? These countries will secede. Well, if you were hoping to see the birth of the new continent with your own eyes, we have some bad news for you. Because it will be another 5 to 10 million years before Africa breaks apart completely. Some scientists even put the relevant period at 20 to 60 million years. The very simple reason for this is that the so-called rifting is taking place at a very leisurely pace. It is happening at about the same speed as our toenails grow. Many researchers assume that the split-off continent will include Somalia, Eritrea, Djibouti, and the eastern parts of Ethiopia, Kenya, Tanzania, and Mozambique. However, we should not hide the fact that not all experts are convinced that the current development will actually result in the creation of a new landmass. 
After all, the geological forces driving the rifting may prove too slow to separate the African and Somali plates. And indeed, this would by no means be the first time that the splitting of the Earth has failed. The same fate also befell the Mid-Continent Rift, which runs for 3,000 kilometers through the upper Midwest of North America. The movement of the Rhine Rift also came to a standstill again. According to the experts, failed rift valley ruptures are actually a common characteristic of global continental landmasses. In principle, however, the opposite case is also conceivable. It is possible that development in Africa will not slow down and come to a standstill, but that it will actually accelerate and split up the continent faster than current predictions suggest. How will the other continents change? In view of the fate that may be in store for Africa, we are once again reminded of another fact. The Earth's land masses are constantly in motion. But what actually led to our world looking the way it does today and what incredible structures will continental drift create in the future? Well, at this point we should not forget one thing. From a geological point of view, today's continents are still relatively young. In fact, they have only had their rough shapes and positions for around 50 million years. If we now turn back the wheel of time by 4.5 billion years and take a look at the freshly baked Earth, we realize that the term freshly baked is extremely apt. Back then, our blue home planet was nothing more than a boiling hot, partially melted ball. A few million years later, the earthly furnace had cooled down enough for water to collect on the surface, but there was still no trace of continents. The land masses were only born 3 million years ago, when they gradually rose from the primordial ocean. But exactly how this process took place is still disputed by researchers. A new study suggests that the first land masses were formed as part of melting processes within the Earth's water-covered crust. Contrary to earlier assumptions, plate tectonic processes are unlikely to have played a significant role in this. At the beginning of the so-called Mesozoic era 250 million years ago, Pangaea was a primordial continent that encompassed all of the Earth's existing land masses. With an extent of almost 140 million square kilometers, the supercontinent existed until the Jurassic period and thus until around 150 million years before our time. Basically, the Earth's outer crust, consisting of oceanic and continental crust, is a relatively thin layer of rock that is made up of several plates and practically floats on the Earth's mantle. And it is well known that these plates are constantly being shifted as part of tectonic processes. As a result, gigantic masses of Earth were displaced, mighty mountain ranges were created, old seas were closed and new ones opened. As a result, Laurasia and Gondwana initially emerged from Pangaea before these large continents also disintegrated and the Earth gradually took on the face we know today. In view of the development to date, one might think that the earthly land masses will continue to fragment in the future. All the more surprising, therefore, is what a scientific look into the future reveals. The Earth's continents will once again unite to form one gigantic landmass. What the next supercontinent will look like? To find out what the world of the future would look like, a team led by Michael Way from NASA's Goddard Institute for Space Studies has fast-forwarded time. This means that the experts used a geophysical simulation to look at how the movements of the continents will be reflected in millions of years. The exciting result, although the land masses are relatively widely distributed across the globe today, in around 200 million years there will be a class reunion of the continents. And while the land masses are concentrated in one area, they will merge again to form a supercontinent similar to Pangaea. In detail, researchers have been assuming for some time that the interplay of supercontinents and fragmented land masses takes place with a certain regularity. However, things are somewhat less clear when it comes to the exact location of the next supercontinent. Based on the simulations carried out, two scenarios emerge. The first states that Asia and North America will first drift towards each other and create the supercontinent Amasia before the other land masses at the North Pole also merge. In this model, only Antarctica remains independent at the South Pole. 
The second possibility is, again, based on the assumption that the Continental Rendezvous will take place somewhat later, in 250 million years to be precise. If this is the case, the continent named Aurica will not be located at the North Pole, but in the equatorial region. This would mean that the landmass would follow in the footsteps of the primordial continent Rodinia, a hypothetical supercontinent that is believed to have formed 1.1 billion years ago. The study also reveals that the location of the next supercontinent will affect the global climate. If it becomes a Asia in the north, the climate will cool noticeably. As the North Atlantic disappears, the global ocean currents that currently ensure the heat balance between the high latitudes and the tropics will also collapse. The snowfalls and ice sheets that Amasia will call its own will also increase the Earth's reflectivity, causing temperatures to drop even further. 40% of the supercontinent would be too cold to harbor liquid water. However, the Orica model presents a completely different picture the colossal continent at the equator would soak up the incoming sunlight like a kind of sponge and consequently heat up considerably. While the coastal regions offer pleasant vacation weather, the interior is dominated by a dust-dry steppe and desert landscape. Press subscribe because the biggest highlights are yet to come.